Why are intervals so hot right now? Why are you seeing more interval pro interval programming on the game site on uh, CrossFit.com, on the CrossFit affiliate programming, what they program for affiliates? Why is this happening? I'm going to answer this in a roundabout way by one giving a case study that I hope you guys found interesting that I found very interesting. Jason Hopper is a games athlete. He's been around for several years now. He kind of burst onto the scene in 2021. He won his regionals, went to the games that year and took seventh. That was in 2021. Now this is a former division one college football player. I think he played running back or wide receiver at Clemson. So a very good athlete. Burst onto the scene, killed it at 2021. And then in 2022, so he won regionals in 2021. In 2022, he took seventh at the CrossFit Games. And in 2023, coming into 2023, he was one of the guys that was mentioned a lot as potentially being on the podium, as being top three in 2023. In the first six workouts of 2023, he was below 30th on three of them in the ranking out of 40 athletes and wasn't in the top 10 on any and ended up getting cut after the sixth workout because he wasn't in the top 20. And in fact, I think he was around 30th or 32nd or something like that. And the last workout that he did in 2023 was a workout called Helena, which was uh, kind of a, a version of Helen. Helen is a classic CrossFit named wad. Three rounds for time of a 400 meter run, 21 kettlebell swings and 12 pull-ups. They turned the volume up on that since these are games athletes. Um, they still did the run, but they did dumbbell snatches instead of kettlebell swings, and they did bar muscle ups instead of the pull ups. The uh, best times on that workout, I think the top 15 or 17 were below eight minutes and 30 seconds. Jason had a time of 9.39 for on a workout like that with that group was way down at the bottom of the pack. He was close to the bottom, and then he got cut. And I remember I saw an interview with him after 2023 where he was talking about what happened. What happened, Jason? And he was talking about he was training with Hard Worth Pays Off, HWPO, Matt Frazier's training company. And he was working directly with Matt Frazier. And Matt Frazier's won the games five times, more than any other games athlete. And is famous for her his ability to just handle an a superhuman amount of volume. He can just keep doing work and work and work and come back, come back, come back fresher than ever. And that's why I think he is the best we've seen so far at the games in that sense. And so when, and Jason being a top level athlete, but maybe not quite at that level of Matt Frazier as far as his ability to handle that volume. After regionals of 2023, he asked Matt, what do I do? And Matt was basically like, do more, do more of everything. So he was doing, just grinding out workouts. Lots of workouts in the 14, 15, 20 minute time frame. And he said, when I got to the games in 2023, as I look back, I was just worn out. And when it came time on those workouts for me to floor it, for me to go at 90%, for me to really drop the hammer on my power output, he said it wasn't there. It just, I couldn't turn the volume up anymore. It wouldn't go there. And he was very frustrated. He was very discouraged. But what I'm glad to say is there's a redemption story for him. This last year in 2024, he ends up taking fourth overall. And there was one workout called the Dickies Triplet, which was a, just eerily similar to Helena from 2023. It was five rounds, but it was a shorter run, 175 meter run. And you were doing toes to bar instead of the bar muscle ups. And you were doing dumbbell snatches again, a little bit heavier dumbbell snatches. And this was a workout, the fast people were all finishing in under eight minutes and 30 seconds. And Jason, with a time of, what was it, 7.39, took first on that workout. So completely different result on a very similar workout for him one year later. One year older, one year with more wear and tear, and yet blew the doors off compared to the first time. And what was cool is I saw an interview with him before the 2024 games, where he was talking about how his programming had been different. He was still working with Hard Work Pays Off, but working with a coach there named Jake Marconi, who has a very good reputation. Jake was having him do lots of interval work, lots of two minutes on, two minutes off, three minutes on, three minutes off, four minutes on, three minutes off, that kind of stuff. Why was he doing that? Because he was still letting Jason get a lot of volume 
maybe not quite as much volume, but quite a bit of volume, but more dipping into that 90%, 85% well of the intensity. And you guys know, this is a horse, dead horse that I beat a lot. Intensity is the key for what we do. You can't go 90% every day. You can't go all the time. And we are normal human beings compared to these super human beings. But the point was there too that Jason had worn himself out and fooled himself he was getting better by doing just more volume of work and working hard, probably working at that 70, 75% level and doing a lot more work. But he had lost the ability when it came time to floor it, to floor it. And I think I see this life cycle in a lot of CrossFit athletes. And this doesn't so much have to do with age, it's just that you've been doing this for several years, doing CrossFit. And there's a tendency, and I don't think this is conscious, I think this may be somewhat subconscious, I don't think you say this to yourself, like this is my plan, but it kind of evolves into this. And frankly, it's, it's the point of which I need to maintain my fitness, I wanna maintain. And there's other changes maybe I don't wanna make. I don't wanna dial in my diet any more than I have. I don't wanna stop drinking any more than I ever have. I like to go out and party on the weekends. Uh, I don't want to change my lifestyle enough so I can get more sleep, but I'm trying to stay more fit. And so we say to ourselves, I'm just gonna work more. I'm gonna do more volume. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna get a lot of work in. And that's why we like the longer sweaty, I'm gonna do those 20, 30 minute workouts at the gym. And there is a place for those, we love those. But guys, volume does not roll uphill. Intensity does roll downhill. Intensity, working hard, lets you keep that ability and makes your ability to do the, makes the volume of work you do when you're working at a slightly lesser capacity even more effective. Whereas all you, if all you do is this volume of work in that 70% range, you lose that ability to floor it. It is a, phys a physiological ability that just like I talk about anything we do, you've heard me say this too, Use it or lose it. And we want to find sometimes, I think subconsciously, we want to find tricks around the intensity because intensity is hard and it's uncomfortable. And going into that dark place, like Camille coined the phrase back in the day, but going to that dark place is something that's unpleasant to do. And so once we're experienced with CrossFit, we think I can just go to 70% a lot and get the same result. Now, this doesn't mean that you floor it every day. I don't think that we can handle that kind of volume on that intensity. By nature, if you're going intensely, there's a limited amount you can do of that. But it needs to still happen regularly, a couple times a week uh, is what I would say. So that's where what I think we've seen. I think other programmers that are conscious of their programming and watching their athletes and trying to get the best out of them are realizing just programming all these 10 and 14 and 20 minute workouts we need those regularly. But how can I still give you a little more volume than just making class that day a three minute workout? But give you chances to go again and again and again into that intensity well of going at 85 or 90%. And how long is the time frame for you to be able to do that? I'd say, you know, two to four minutes, somewhere in that range. Anything under two minutes, I say, is pretty close to max capacity. You're not really pacing. Uh, under two minutes, but then yeah, you get to that three minute time frame. That's like a sweet spot of you can go at about 85 or 90 percent for three minutes. It's hard. It's like a Fran type workout for a lot of us. It's not totally balls to the wall, but it's pretty close. Your balls are pretty close to the wall. Um, and so, how often will you see this in class? We're not going to do intervals every day. But we are gonna do them, I would say, once to twice a week. And often you will see me disguise these interval workouts as partner workouts. You guys all know too, we know partner workouts. I was talking to Sanchez about this. They are tough because you will go harder because someone's waiting on you than you want to. And this is why people just will avoid and swear off, I don't go on partner days. But it, when you do that, look at yourself and know, I'm avoiding exactly the kind of workout that would be the most useful for me to do because it puts me in a very uncomfortable spot. The other guy, if you slow down, down them down a little bit, they don't care, but it's gonna make you go harder. Just, you know, we did that last Monday or whenever it was, we did the synchronized kettlebell swings. And that wasn't you go, I go for interval work, but bringing to the point of you go harder, I was doing that with Coach John. And I knew going into that workout, John had more capacity. He could have done 150 kettlebell swings faster on his own, then he was gonna be able to go if he was timed to me. But I didn't wanna slow him down any more than necessary. 
and I wanted it to bring out the most in me. And so I went hard on that workout. I worked as hard as I could to get those swings done. We were done on our own, about seven minutes, I think a little over, and I was wrecked. And it was great, it was a great workout, exactly what I needed, but it was because of that partner effect. I don't care how bad I wanted it, if I've done those swings on my own, I would not have worked that hard. So even this coming Sunday, we're doing a bunch of run intervals. And again, this is the end of deload week, so I wouldn't mandate it as much as I would at other times that you go hard. But when you see those interval run workouts, that is because I want you going faster on each run than if I programmed a mile run. I want you doing a bunch of sprints, going at 90% over and over and over. In the same way, next at the end of next week, there'll be an interval workout. I think it's next weekend, so after this weekend. But uh, workouts where you're going for about a minute 40. So that is a 90 to 95% pace, and you're doing that seven different times. If I programmed a workout that was 10 minutes long, you would not be able to go for 90 at 90% for 10 minutes. But if I programmed 10 minutes of work with some little breaks in between, you can go at 90% each time. You may not get as many reps each time. Your end result of how much work you get done may decrease, but the in, the effect it has on your body will be that I re-dipped into the well over and over and over of going that hard. And so that's why I think you're seeing this influx of interval training. This was not something you saw a lot in main CrossFit programming, but I think I know that as a whole, for those programmers that are watching this, we're seeing that this is an incredibly effective tool to use to get that. And guys, don't fool yourself. If you want to continue to grow at a fitness standpoint, if you want to continue to use CrossFit, there's no way around it. You've got to go hard, so hard, that you are incredibly uncomfortable at certain times. Because otherwise we dial it back and dial it back and all of a sudden we're back in the 90s and you're doing the workouts I used to do. You're on the step Stairmaster for two year, for two hours or you're doing the bike for two hours. And now we've totally lost, we're not even doing CrossFit anymore. You've lost the point. CrossFit is high intensity. And so I hope you found that interesting. I hope that story helped make my point. I thought it was really cool to see that exactly play out with the difference in programming for Jason. All right, right on guys. I'll talk to you later.